Good afternoon and welcome to another great opportunity to celebrate something, to sing about something. This week's theme is Triune Teamwork. Um, so this week is the, the, um, the Holy Trinity, the Feast of the Holy Trinity, um, the Most Holy Trinity, whatever you want to call it, the Solemnity of the Holy Trinity um, throughout the, the church. Um, and so I am not going to try and explain the Trinity for you um, because we'll leave that to Pastor Catherine um, on Sunday morning. But we're going to talk about the Trinity. We're going to do more than talk about it. We're going to sing about it because there's some great music um, to talk about the Trinity. So you'll notice um, the Easter candle, I have two of them, are back here. They're um, not lit. We are no longer in Easter tide. Um, we are in the time after Pentecost um, or ordinary time. Ordinal time is the church word for it. Um, so we are in the season after Pentecost and the first Sunday after Pentecost is Trinity Sunday. We get Trinity uh, Sunday from the end of the first century. So this is a very, very old, very early celebration in the church. Clement of Rome writes, um, and he asks why corruption exists among some in the Christian community. Um, and it, quote, Do we not have one God and one Christ and one gracious spirit that has been poured out upon us and one calling in Christ? And so we have that early ideology of the Trinity, the three in one um, being, and they all work together as one. You know, John Maxwell, the theme, uh, an ev evangelical minister, he has this quote that kind of has been running through my head, teamwork makes the dream work. Um, it's, it's one, but it's also a team of together. You know, one doesn't outshine the other, but they all need each other to work. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Um, and it's about the kingdom of God, and it's about relationship and its interconnectedness. So like Pastor Catherine, we were talking in staff earlier this week, um, what each of us do, does, do's, what each of us do's, <laughs> what, each of, what each of us does as a staff, whether it's here at Zion or wherever, um, we all are together um, and interconnected. Um, what we do then um, as um, uh, a church, so as we function as a pastor and staff and uh, committees, uh, work together. There's interconnectedness. And then even further out, we incorporate then the whole congregation and we incorporate the world. We are all interconnected. Um, it's all about a relationship and interconnectedness so that we are together. Alone, we can do we can do things, but together we can do great things. And um, we are one. We are one in the body of Christ, the Holy Trinity. That's as clear as mud, but that's what we're going with. And Pastor Catherine will clear that up like a bright sunny day on Sunday morning uh, for all of us. So make sure to tune in um, either in person or online and have that cleared up for you for Trinity Sunday. Um, but we're going to start um, with a great hymn for Trinity Sunday, Come Thou Almighty King. Surprise, surprise, the original title of this hymn was A Hymn for the Trinity. Um, it is at least as old as 1757, but we do suspect it maybe is a little bit older than that. Um, the final verse of this hymn is a doxology. So that time period and earlier, um, everything always ended with the doxology. Um, we give thanks to God uh, for everything that we have been given. So here we have the hymn, Come Thou Almighty King. Come thou almighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise, Father all-glorious, or all-victorious, come and reign over us, ancient of days. Come thou incarnate Word, merciful mind. Oh, man. 
our first hymn on the Trinity. We have all of the names uh, for God in that hymn. It's a great uh, stately sort of way to begin. We're going to turn to two hymns that are in the Trinity section of our hymnal. May seem a bit odd. They also serve a whole other purpose other than being Trinitarian hymns. Um, but you will hear we call upon God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in um, both of these. Actually, I think they use um, Holy Ghost um, in at least this first one. So the first one is Kyrie, God the F God Father. Um, this is from the Ordinary of the Mass, um, and it... Uh, um, and it was the first hymn that was cast in the vernacular um, there. And it's from the Latin, uh, Fons Bonitatis Pater Ingenite. Um, and you'll hear that, God, um, God the Father in heaven above is uh, translation there. This is a uh, text from at least the 12th century. In the 16th century, so in the 1500s, we, have, we get the German adaptation of this. Kyrie got Vater in, um, in, ed, in Ewigkeit, um, about 1541. And so that it makes sense come about um, um, that it was used, I'm sorry, not 1541. Um, I didn't write very well in this instance. Anyway, so it's used, it was earlier, and then used um, in the Luther German Mass. So um, here's the dealio with this. The Lutheran Church uh, brought everything into the vernacular. We know this, correct? Yes, nod your heads, yes. Um, so the Lutheran Church brought um, music into the vernacular, into the German language. And so they would start to sing um, hymns and songs that they knew instead of Latin in, in German. But this, this caused uh, um, a happy result, so to speak, because in Luther's time, you still um, used the Mass in Latin. Um, if, but now you could do a whole mix of things. You could go to Mass and you could have Mass in Latin. You could go to Mass and you could have Mass in German. You could go to Mass and you could have Mass in Latin, but then you could do the chorale or the propers, which is what the Kyrie is. You could do the propers in German. And then not only could you do it in German, but you could have the choir sing the propers for, of the day. Um, and then the rest of it would be in Latin, which the choir would sing or the, the the, the, the minister would sing. Or you could have the congregation sing the propers in German and the rest of the mass would be in Latin. Or you could do the whole mass in German um, with, with German propers sung by the choir only. Or do you see how it adds this whole other element to this? So we have Kyrie got Vater um, in Ewigkeit, the Kyrie, which is the proper. It means it never changes during the, the whole of the church year. The Kyrie is always there, no matter what, um, in whatever form of the, the mass or the service you're doing, whichever you want to call it. So here we have Kyrie God Vater, um, um, Kyrie God the Father. It calls upon each of, of um, the names, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And you will also probably correct me here if you know your church roots, but Kyrie is not Latin. So this is a Latin uh, Greek mix, uh, mix here because you have Kyrie and then you have the text, Fons Bonitati Pater Ingenite. So you've got Kyrie, the Greek, and then you have the Latin uh, trope, the Latin verses in between each Kyrie. So Kyrie eleison is Greek, Lord have mercy and then a Latin text, which they translated into German and made this text.
and bless our life's last hour that we So there we have our beginning, our first church proper, the Kyrie eleison. Next, we're going to move on to the next church proper that directly follows the Kyrie, um, the Lord have mercy, the penitential rite, if you will. <coughs> and take a look at Allein Gott in die Hör. I think, is it die? In der, in der her. All glory be to God on high. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the German version of the Gloria. So the Latin text is Gloria in excelsis Deo et in terre pax hominibus bone voluntatis. Uh, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. Um, so this is for, um, again, for the chorale tradition, which is what Luther started. Uh, it's the Lutheran version of this, of the Gloria in Excelsis. The text and melody we have here are from Nicholas um, Decius, I think is how you pronounce his name. Um, it's old. It's an, um, uh, from a long, longer time ago, around the time of our Kyrie we just sang. In this, in this hymn, or chorale, as it is better referred to as, stanzas two through four, you will hear uh, calling upon the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This one does use Holy Spirit instead of Holy Ghost. Um, so here we have the All Glory Be to God on High, Allein Gott in der Höhe.
All glory be to God on high. Again, um, the music here was based on a plain song chant and Nicholas uh, Decius. So the dates they give here are um, 1485 to 1550. So this is an old translation of the text and an old adaptation of a plain song chant uh, there. But there we have it. Next, getting into some Trinity stuff that we all know, uh, go off on a high note here. First is a text from Revelation 4. Let's see if you can guess which one it is. Just a moment. Revelation 4 is this. Um, after this, I looked, and there was a, and there in heaven a door stood open. And the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there in heaven stood a throne, with one seated on the throne, and the other seated there looks like Jasper and Carnelian. And around the throne is a rainbow that looks like an emerald. Around the throne are 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones are 24 elders, dressed in white robes, with golden crowns on their heads. Coming from the throne are flashes of lightning, and rumblings and peals of thunder. And in front of the throne burn seven flaming torches, which are the seven spirits of God. And in front of the throne there is something like a sea of glass, like crystal. Do you have an idea yet what this hymn could be? Continuing on. Around the throne and on the, each side of the throne are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second like an ox, the third living creature with a face uh, like a fa human face, and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle, the four gospel writers. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and inside. Day and night, without ceasing, they sing... See if you can guess it if you haven't figured it out yet. Holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Do you have it yet? And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall before the one who is seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, singing, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Do you have any idea? Raise your hands. Do you have any idea? Do you have any idea? Hopefully you do. Um, this is a hymn by Reginald Heber, Heber for Trinity Sunday, based on this text. Also from Isaiah 63, um, which um, doesn't really have any Trinitarian themes, but we will hear it this weekend on Trinity Sunday. Um, it uses, uh, it was uh, published in 1826, and um, this is something I was told years ago when I started at Grace in Winchester. Um, and I suspect maybe here at Zion, I don't know. Um, it was the first hymn every Sunday morning for the majority of the 20th century um, in Protestant churches. This was the hymn that was sung as the first hymn every Sunday morning um, for a very large part of that hymn. Um, there were people at Grace that could tell me the number of Holy, Holy, Holy in the red hymnal and the green hymnal um, because they just knew it and they didn't need to open the hymnal. When we sang that hymn, they didn't have to crack their books open. They knew the words. So was that that way for you? Raise your hands. Did you, did you sing that every weekend um, regardless of Trinity Sunday or not? It would be interesting to know. Uh, if you did. So here we have Holy, Holy, Holy. i 
hymn. That's a great, great hymn. And finally, our last one. This is a metrical version, so very metered, meaning that it's uh, fairly strict, straightforward, a version of the Te Deum Laudamus. So we praise you, O God. We sing this at morning, morning prayer every day. We praise you, O God, and we give thanks to you for all creation. It is one of the principal hymns of the church. It's a very important uh, hymn to have sung. It's a hymn of praise for all of creation, from angels and powers and, apo and apostles and prophets and martyrs and the whole church to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, it's used in various instances throughout the year. Um, here in the Lutheran Church, we use it as a hymn to the Trinity. Um, also, though, it's a hymn for morning prayer at the start of the day, um, a hymn at the close of the day as well. In the, um, in the uh, Catholic Church, it's also a, a hymn used um, at the end of adoration. It's used um, to praise God. Again, it's a hymn of praise. And so at the end of adoration, the host is put back in the tabernacle. Um, and it's a hymn of praise to give thanks for everything that God has done. So in, it's, in, it's, it's kept its common thread, if you will, throughout all of church history uh, as, a, as a hymn of praise. We may use it differently in different instances, but it's that same common thread. It's praising God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we end today with, Holy God, we praise thy name. It tells a great story. <coughs> so there you have it. Triune teamwork. The three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit working together. <coughs> Excuse me. To bring love and peace and joy and mercy to a world, especially a world in need, a world uh, hurting, and a world groaning. 
to know God better. Woo, I got something caught in or tickling today. So I hope that you've enjoyed this little trip down um, Trinity Lane um, as we talked about Trinity. Next week, I think we're going to dive into the church service and we're going to talk about propers and we're going to sing about the propers of the church service and what makes up what is traditionally known as the Mass. Um, big scary word that everybody doesn't not everybody, people don't like to use because it can seem like it's something else. Um, but we're going to dive in and we're going to look at some really neat music written for um, the Mass, uh, the Lutheran service, the Lutheran chorale service, and we're going to dig into some really great stuff, I think. I think that'll be fun. I know it will be fun. Um, I hope that you have a great week, that you are blessed. Um, it's rainy, and I was watching this tree. It was catching my eye. It was... Uh, quite blustery out today. So I hope that you uh, stay dry, that we do not get any of that stuff that's white and begins with an S. I put my shovel away this week, so of course it's going to do that. Um, but I hope to see you on Sunday morning or next week as we sing some great music and do a little bit of digging and learning together. So have a blessed week and we will see you uh, when we see you. God bless.